I have some official DeSizo OpenSense hardware. In this video, we're going to be looking at, is it any good? Is it worth its money? Is it worth buying? This particular one is a 677. Uh, the one that I'm going to be reviewing in this video is a 675. It's a slightly older model. It looks identical, uh, but it's one gigabit instead of 2.5. I can't take, I can't do this one because it's under warranty and I can't take it apart because it's on loan. Um, speaking of being on loan, I'd like to give a shout out to Scott from Sirius IT for uh, loaning me this equipment. Normally when we get firewalls in, we have to configure them for customers so they're in and out and I don't get time to do any videos. And Scott has um, kind of lent me three devices. I've got a 675, I've got a 677 and I've got a 2770 rack mount version. So we'll get started, but we just want to have a look at the hardware and is it worth the price tag? Sheridan Computers. IT. Communications. Support. The box is branded and we can see OpenSense certified hardware. Have a look what's inside. We have the power lead, it's just the uh, two prong version which will fit into the power brick. So we have the power brick and this is a 12 volt 3 amp 36 watt max. I'm assuming this is a console cable. There's a little bit of weight in this. The first thing that you notice when you take it out of the box is the weight. Um, the second thing is the feel of it it feels very very well built it's uh aluminium so there's no plastic so it will be used in the aluminium case for the passive cooling hold this up so you can see it so the lamp ports are numbered um it's got a pretty design if you look on the front we have the four gigabit ethernet ports uh, so we've got zero one two three all nicely labeled we've got the usb console and dcm so the four gigabits the usb console dcm and hold this a bit further it looks like a factory reset on the back of it oh, sorry on the sides there's no vent the rear is plain um, but this what feels like a heatsink is um yeah it does feel very very nice looking on the bottom so this still has the warranty sticker on it i'm guessing the screws to open it there's going to be one under the warranty sticker and the rest will be under the feet so I do have permission to take this one apart and have a look at what's inside. I need to ask them where they get the warranty void from remove stickers. Something tells me they really don't want you to remove that. Let's see if this one fits. Yep, under the feet. Yes, we've got screws under the feet. I'll leave these back on when I'm done. So removing the feet from the bottom exposes the screws. And they are uh, not a standard Phillips. Oh, that tight. I have never took one of these apart before, so I just try not to break it as I do this. I have no idea how this comes apart. So. To remove the casing, just gently lift the rear and then pull it forward, which exposes the board. There's not much on the underneath. These are the same size screws. Let's see what's on the other side. They are slightly larger screws. So this one fits. Yeah. So this does look like it's the actual heatsink, so we're probably going to dislodge the... Yeah, so we are. Okay, so we can see the memory, which is a standard so dim so i'm guessing that's upgradable and this is just the make is transcend uh, and it's 4 gig ddr3 1600 so dim 1r8 and 1.5 volt so you can see from this it's um, very well put together it feels well built so i'll put this back together and just uh get some more heating the flash is there so the can you see that the storage card oh, which is a 32 gig uh, flash card so quality wise um you really can't complain if you need to set the flash card out for whatever reason you're gonna have to obviously strip this down All right way son and then just slide that back in saying slide it back in get in i could um reprint the warranty void if removed nobody will know any better if i hadn't just broadcast it across youtube Let's see if we can stick the feet back on here. the serial cable in. so you can see that was detected straight away so using putty i'm just going to uh, connect to the console because i don't like flying blind um so our usb serial device was detected when i plugged it in and we're on com 7 so i'm going to head over to com 7 and i'm going to see sorry i'm going to set the serial line to com 7 i'm assuming the speed will be 119200 let's do open so now if i connect this I believe you should get some kind of output. Oh, yep, there we go. So because there's no um, VGA port on this, I just plugged the serial console in so I could see what was going on. Interesting that it tried to do a pixie boot first, rather than default into the flash card. And this is on, let's say this is an older device that I have, so it's on 24.4, um, Savvy Shark. Okay, we're in, so the uh, LAN is set to 1920. This has obviously been configured previously, so uh, let me log in. Hopefully they've not changed the passwords. Nope. Um, 
I'm just going to do a 4 and reset this to factory default. So this device was loaned to me, so it's obviously been set up previously. Still interesting, it's trying to do Pixie Boot first. Okay, so you can see the LAN's picked up 192.168.1.1, which is the default OpenSense LAN. And the one is on 192.168.100.102. Uh, I know that's on a private address, it's just the way I've got my system set up. So with that, we should be able to log into the web interface. So obviously we've got the security certificate warning. I can log in, so root open sense is it yeah so with that we get the uh, open sense setup wizard so I'll click next so open sense as it is our dhcp override enable resolver that's fine next so the time zone so i'm obviously in the uk so europe london next so we're going to set up the one so my one's set to dhcp the only thing i need to do really is i need to not block private networks because my one is getting a private network interface so next then we get the options to set the LAN. I'm just going to leave these as default. Root password. So I'm just going to leave that at the moment. Reload. So I continue to the dashboard. I'll check for updates. So we'll check for updates. OpenSense business is not available on this repository. Um, so I've not got a business license for this just yet. So I'm going to change. go ahead into the settings. And then I'm going to change the type um, across to community. And save. Why is it saying that? It won't let me change this. Subscription cannot be set for non-subscription firmware. Okay. Community. And it's the default and click save it's still not letting me do it this is ridiculous um there's something i'm doing it would appear that we have to remove okay so if we have something in here it won't let me do it so we need to make sure that the description field is blank if we don't have a if we do updates check for updates so it's going to take us to 24.1.10 okay we go ahead we found these updates i say this is an older device that was given to me and that coffee's gold that update took a while i forgot how long it um takes through an update when you're not using ssd normally when i'm using open sense i'm using an ssd but because this is on a flash card it took a while to update so i'm going to switch back to the business version so i'm going to go to firmware settings and what we're going to need to do is as at this point if we switch to business and then do that it's going to say you can use a subscription for non-subscription firmware mirror so what we need to do is change the mirror and I'm just going to search for commercial like that. And I'm going to go ahead and paste my key in. So I've pasted the key in with a check for updates. So now I want to get to um, this business release is based on the OpenSense 24.4.2 version. So we have changed to the business branch. You can see 24.4.3. So I'm going to go ahead and do this update. And I'll come back next week when it's finished. Boots it back up. Let's see where we're up to. So you can see we're on OpenSense 24.4. 4.3 uh, and we're licensed till 29th 1st 2026 i'm going to check for updates I'm hopefully we're up to date nope we're all good uh, no we're not open sense 24.4 savvy shark has reached its end of life as such it will not receive any more updates but the upgrade to the new 24.10 series is seamless so we'll do that so this is open sense business edition uh 24.10 including zfs snapshot support that was me. I wrote that initially, uh, and I'd give me a lot of help from OpenSense to get it actually in. So yeah, let's go ahead and upgrade this. I'll come back next week. I'm going to do a full review on the business edition, uh, but the benefits of it are it's not updated as much as the community edition. The community edition is where all the new changes are tested, new features are tested. Once it's solid, they get put back into the business edition. Now, in addition to that, the business edition also has uh, central management so if we go into firmware plugins and I'm going to type central you can see there's this uh, OS dash open central plugin in the description open central management um, so you can install this for managing multiple firewalls it's a very quick update you don't need to reboot um, let's just install the plugin uh, and I'll reload the web interface so once we've installed the plugin you can now see that we have this management option appearing in the dashboard. So allow, doing this allows you to update the firmware of multiple firewalls, all from within one firewall. We can handle provisioning. You can see the status, services, and resources. So I'm going to do a full video on Open Central. Um, it does deserve its own video. So what's my thoughts on the um, DEC 675? Is it worth it? Absolutely. The hardware is solid. Um, the only downside of it is the fact that it runs off a flash card uh, and whether that's a downside kind of depends on what you're using it if you're a home lab where you're doing plenty of updates it's going to be a bit slow if it's a business where you just want reliability and for it to run forever flash cards are fine uh, let me switch over there are some settings you're going to want to make on the settings miscellaneous we have 
Disk and memory settings, so reboot to apply changes. So var log ROM disk, use memory file for var, use memory file system for var log. If you're using a flash card, you're gonna to want to tick this. Um, if you've got enough memory and you don't need to keep the logs forever, to be honest, even if you're using an SD, SSD, ticking this will help you um, preserve the life of your drive. Temp ROM disk, use memory file system for temp. So by using the memory file system for both temp and var log, um, obviously OpenSense does a lot of logging and it's going to be writing constantly so if it's a flash card you don't want it to do that. Now the business editions do come with those options set automatically, you don't have to change them. Uh, but if you're doing a fresh install using the community edition and using a flash card, um, and say, oh, it just works faster to log into RAM anyway if you've got plenty of RAM. So yeah, they're absolutely solid and I do recommend them. I've installed uh, routers and firewalls using vanilla FreeBSD on flash cards on systems with 2 gig of RAM in them before now, and like an 8 gig flash card, uh, and they're still running to this day. Um, I wish the companies had come back and asked me to upgrade them, but they don't. They will just run forever. I think I've had two die that I've installed like 10 or 15 years ago, and the hardware's died before the card's worn out because you write into memory and you're not writing to the card. The only thing to be wary about is the upgrade process. If you're running an upgrade, it does take a while. Um, it can take a good 10 15 minutes off a flash card, maybe longer, just depends on the speed of the system. Um, but yeah. I get plenty of these in, I don't really get a chance to review them, so thanks once again to Scott from Cirrus IT for loaning me this equipment to do a test on. If you are looking to buy official OpenSense products, where can you buy them? Well, if you go to decisocom where to buy our products, I have an easy selection so you can just select your region where you are and find out who's selling them. So if we go to United Kingdom, Cirrus IT services limited here. So. Oops. They are an authorised reseller. If you're unsure of which model to buy, if you head across to Cirrus ITS, so, so just Cirrus ITS, Scott has done a great job of putting um, some open sense information together and he's done a great comparison guide. Um, one thing that's missing off the Decisive website is a comparison between the different series of firewalls and what you get. And Scott has broken this down, he's done a great job. So if you head over there, and if you're looking to buy any hardware, then I highly recommend Scott. He's a great guy and he is a friend of ours. If you're interested in OpenSense videos, subscribe to the channel. There's a lot of them and I'll have more to come.